All right. So if everybody could mute themselves, that would be greatly Thank appreciated. You help. This is John. I may help you. If you're not already muted. And hey, Joe, how are you? Newcomer. Good. Did you get your package? Okay. Oops. All right. So welcome okay, to Friday good. Night Live good. with John. Um, we're just starting our Zoom call. We've got right now, some so announcements, run, like John but, uh, mentioned. Is there anything so I can answer for you real quick? First thing, we are starting a group detox okay. on okay. Um, September 25th. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I left a message earlier. All right, so um, if anyone wants to join us, uh, we'll send some more information out. Um, we have our Facebook page that uh, we will use to support everyone who's doing that. We, you'll still get your calls from the office if you want those. Um, but after the week of the detox, we're going to jump into 17 days of superfoods. So we did this at the beginning of the year in January. It was a good success for most people. I think everybody, they followed it. So we'll talk more about that as well. This is the Facebook private page that we share our food and successes and struggles. And there's also a um, QR code at the end of this. And there was a QR code on the email, but um, you can search for it as alternative health community page private. And you have to ask to be um, part of it. Our next Zoom call will be Friday, October 20th. Topic is unknown at this point, but we so come up with something good. If anyone has suggestions, ideas, things that you want to hear us talk about, let us know. And we've got some new product coming soon. So I found a um, protein powder through a Research. food group that um, I follow. And it's it's clean, it's candida friendly. It differs from the Melise meal replacement powder because it doesn't have the all the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that the Melise product does. Um, but it it's good, clean protein. I'd say um, there's six different flavors, and five of them are candida friendly. So different flavors. There's a um, mint chocolate. There's a Neapolitan. Um, there's chocolate, there's vanilla. Um, can't remember what the other one is. So um, we will be getting those in hopefully next week. And What's we will butter? share. Well, there's peanut butter chocolate. That one's not candida friendly because it has peanut flour in it. Um, or for anybody who has peanut allergies. So we're excited about that. Just to offer some new flavors um, to get people, you know, always asking for something different and something new. So um, more about that when it comes next week. Okay. And um, some of you have been with us a long time. Some of you are fairly new, but we love testimonials, um, whether it's written, a little video, something we do before and after pictures. Oh, I should go grab that one. Um, I have a client in West Hartford that just finished a two-month um, candida program and she looks fabulous and she's feeling great. Um, so if anybody wants to share their experience, you can, uh, like I said, you can put it in writing, email it to us. You can go to our Google page and put it there. Google reviews is great for that too. Um, and that just helps. We get our clients from referrals and a lot of you know that, so you've referred people or you've been referred by somebody else. So um, that's just really beneficial to us um, instead of trying to do advertisements because people need to hear from someone else um, about their experience with us. So happy to have you do that and we appreciate all of you. And anything else? And Google reviews are really good. We'd really like to get some Google reviews. So anyways, okay, thank you, Patty. You're welcome. Um, one other announcement. Um, I, well, first of all, I just want to thank um, Patty for putting these together. As I say, almost every time she puts them together, gives them to me, I review them quickly. But normally I don't have to make many changes. So 
I just want to thank her and let everybody know who the the stalwart is behind the the effort. Okay, we call it Friday night uh, live with John, but it's really John and Patty. And uh, without her, I I know I wouldn't be doing it. So <laughs> uh, the other thing I want to announce is that um, yeah, Patty's been with me for eighteen years. Yes, eighteen years. And when she first started, she was just a youngster. <laughs> and next Friday's her birthday, and uh, she went from being a youngster to what? A, Careful, mature. Careful. Mature. <laughs> <laughs> so, so next Friday, the twenty second. Is that twenty oh second? It's the twenty second. Twenty second is her birthday. So, um, if you happen to think of it, or you just want to give a shout out, do that. I know she's. Um, she, she likes her birthday, so. <laughs> and that's why we're de we're detoxing after my yeah, birthday. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so. But I have been um, doing a candida program. John and I started at the beginning of August um, with doing a true candida program. Like a lot of you are doing it with all the supplements and the eating. And um, I'm still at it. So I know next weekend we'll, I will fall off it. But um, I've been doing good yeah, me too so still, still following it feeling good <laughs> okay again welcome everybody and we'll get started here and remember uh stay on at the end so we do our drawings and we want the winners to win almost every time we draw somebody and they're gone and they lose so yeah, they right. don't get it you have to be present so we're gonna we talked about the most important thing that we do in our life and that is eat it's important to our health, uh, well-being. We have to eat. Um, we have to do the things, certain things. So what we decided to do is to talk about uh, the foods and what it means and why all the time, whether you're on programs or you're not on programs, we talk so much about what you're putting in your body. And people are constantly, you know, calling, saying, I, even when they're not on programs or done with programs, maintaining uh that type of thing and my first comment is to them you have to look at what you're eating and we have to focus on that so we're going to jump into our legal food lists and we're going to talk about the whys and what ifs and break them down and and i really would like people to ask questions uh as we go through them or if you're going to take notes and then you at the end if you want to ask questions but uh, it's a really good opportunity for people to say, uh, what about this or what about that? And uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to understand, uh, number one, why we're so hard on eating a certain way, especially when you're on programs and after programs and how it means and what it means to be well and stay well. OK, so uh, we, we're calling our deep dive into the legal foods. I hope you enjoy it and um, get something out of it. So basically what we're talking about is all of our different programs, okay? It's not just Candida programs. And Candida is the most strict, but it's also the healthiest way to eat. And if we eat properly, we're not only going to eradicate Candida and get rid of all the different things that are going on in our body, but we're going to be healthy. We're going to be able to do the things like uh, sporting events and or uh, doing some sports and exercising, that type of thing. We're going to lose weight if we need to lose weight. The people that need to gain weight will gain some weight or their body will uh, transition into what it should be. And then we get into a state of wellness. And wellness is everything, okay? Uh, it's physical, mental, spiritual, it's everything. It's not just feeling well, okay? It's having the right mental outlook and getting rid of some of the baggage that we carry sometimes because our physical well-being is, is depleted and we just feel miserable all the time. Uh, we're on the edge of, of tears all the time. Um, a young lady that has been through our program and a lot of her friends and family have been through our programs, she called me a couple of weeks ago uh, maybe, yeah, 10 days ago, I guess it was. And she said, I need to meet with you. And I'm just off track. I just, I don't know what's going on. Uh, so I brought her in, we did a Zyto scan and she was in today. And in about 10 days, 
she lost like almost 13 pounds of body fat because we refocused her on what she was doing to herself, okay? It's so easy to get off track. It is so easy to start going the wrong direction and we need the accountability. And most people have said, I'm just a person to do that because I don't mince words. I'll tell somebody no matter how wonderful and sweet they are, what they're doing wrong and how they need to correct it. Okay. So uh, she was so pleased today. Uh, she said she felt so much better, et cetera. She said, but I came in today and if I got on the machine and I, I things didn't improve, I was going to go get a big old chocolate chip cookie. Well, she didn't need to do that because uh, the numbers were fabulous. So that's what it means to do the right thing and put the right things in our body and eat. So let's let's get into what we're going to talk about, okay? Why? Why are we so strict about our legal foods? Because it's a lifeblood of our body. What we put in our body either helps us or hurts us. And many of you have heard me say, um, when you go to put something in your mouth, you need to ask yourself a question. Is this going to help me? Is this going to hurt me? Now, Throughout our life, there are times when we do things that, and eat things like Patty's birthday is coming up and, and her family will get together and all the different things go on. And I know she will um, not be eating all the legal foods. There are certain instances and cases where we don't, and that's okay, unless you're on a program. Okay, On a program, you stay on it. There is no, oh, I'm going to take this weekend off. So what happens is when we get off track... We have to have the mental fortitude to say, I, yes, I ate some things that I probably shouldn't. My body will feel it. But now I'm going to steer myself back onto the right path and be a little bit more strict than I had been just to make up the difference. So it's not the rest of your life you can never have this or ever eat something that isn't on the, the legal food list. That is not the case. <laughs> And it's not depriving. We have to get out of the mindset that we're depriving ourselves of food, fun, et cetera. We are not. What we're depriving ourselves by eating properly is we're depriving ourselves of sickness, poor health, fatigue, uh, mental fog. That's what we're depriving ourselves. And that's why it's so important to understand that we need to live a life of uh, taking care of ourselves. And first and foremost, that's what we eat and put in our body. So we're going to go down our legal food list and talk about the different lines and try to give a breakdown as to what it all means. So we're going to start out with um, seafood and meat. Now, when we say seafood or meat, etc., there are certain things that we always have to understand. Number one, you can eat any kind of fish. If you have a tendency to, uh, to have issues with cholesterol, whether you want to think it's, it's lifestyle or it's hereditary, doesn't matter. You want to be somewhat careful about how much uh, things like lobster and shrimp you do. They have a tendency to be a higher... Um, cause of a cholesterol. So you don't want to overdose on those kind of, of seafood items. But all other fish is 100% fine, as long as it is wild, not farm-raised. And the reason you do not eat farm-raised fish or seafood is because the farmers that raise it want it to grow to grow it quick, get it on the market. So therefore what happens is when they constantly feed, the, in this case, the seafood, things with antibiotics to keep them well, or try to at least appear that they're well, and they use a lot of steroids, to, they grow fast. Now, just like drinking tap water, uh, what's in the water goes in your body. What's in the, the seafood in this case, goes in your body, whether it's it's antibiotics, whether it's steroids. And oftentimes we will scan people and it says antibiotics. And people say, I'm not on medication. It's coming from somewhere. 
It's either your water or your food. It's getting in your body, okay? Same thing with their chicken, turkey, all that stuff. It needs to be wild or as best you can, not um, uh, quarantined or, or uh, penned. Uh, you want grass-fed. Everything should be grass-fed as much as you can. The unfortunate part of things is oftentimes you will go into the store and it'll say antibiotic-free, steroid-free. You want to go with as close as you can to that but we can never, ever guarantee that what they put on the label is 100% right. That's the unfortunate thing. There's nothing you're going to do about it. But you know that if you get fresh, if you know people that raise chickens uh, or the, the uh, turkeys, obviously that's better. You do not want to think that getting um, chicken breast from the deli or turkey from the deli is real. Mm -hmm. It is processed. So the deli things that people line up to get, it is processed. That's why they can keep it for weeks at a time, uh, not knowing how much they're going to sell, et cetera. So fresh is the way to go. When we do the deli, we do um, uh, penned animals, we are going to get steroids, antibiotics, et cetera. Now, when we talk about beef, same thing. We want uh, beef that is is uh, pastured, okay? Um, we had a woman in today. She's one of our clients, and she owns up in Granville the Scoop, and they do grass-fed. She just told me they, they butchered two animals, two, two or three, she said, mm -hmm. and they got steaks and hamburger, and I've had both in past, and it's delicious. Um, you can buy as much as you want or as little as you want. Anybody who wants a person's name, reach out, uh, let us know. Um, we will, uh, they also make ice cream too, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's called the scoop. Anyways, um, anybody wants some ideas on where to get the stuff, let us know. And we'll do the very best we can to guide you in the right direction, uh, for the, for the proper foods that you might want. When we say once a week, I'm I'm a little bit um, disagreeing on that. If it's good grass fed, whether it's beef, bison, et cetera, you can have it more than once a week, okay? The people that have trouble eliminating and moving stools, those are the people that probably don't wanna be doing it as often because it is harder to digest when we put people on programs and they they are constipated a lot when they and that's one of the reasons they went on programs you don't again you don't want to do the steaks and that type of lot because no matter how good it is it does take longer to digest and it's harder to digest which can slow down the elimination process and the colon uh the peristaltic action in the colon okay if anybody has questions raise your hand throw a note to us um on chat or whatever, what is it? Yep, chat. Chat, okay. And we'll answer uh, the questions. We don't have to say your name. You. Okay. All right. Did I, okay, did I hear somebody? Okay. So let's go down vegetables. You can have all vegetables, okay, except corn. Corn, there is no nutritional value in corn. When you eat People that eat a lot of corn meal, a lot of corn chips, there is no nutrition in it. It's a void of nutrition. Um, again, if you eat corn in the cob, uh, kernel corn, when you move stools, the, the kernels come out just the way they went in, mm -hmm. full, okay? So that the body cannot break it down. I never recommend people eat corn as a, as a vegetable, uh, on our candida programs, we say, or any of our programs, we say, do not eat corn, period. But all your other vegetables, you can eat. When you get to the potatoes, um, they're high carb. And most of you have had our packets and there's a list of, of uh, carbohydrate levels. You'll see corn, I mean, I'm sorry, you'll see potatoes is 25% carb. 
And that means if you're trying to lose weight, you want to maintain weight, potatoes are detrimental to that. Here and there, they're fine. But don't get in the habit of just thinking the potatoes. And when I went through a program, I'll be honest, way back in my first program, I, I was chicken and potatoes. And back then we could do Triscuits. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, potatoes, chicken, mm -hmm. and Triscuits. Mm -hmm. All right. And they've since changed the Triscuits and everything the way they do them so we don't let people have them. Um, don't overcook your vegetables. Once you overcook, um, you lose the nutrition and there's no sense in eating it. Uh, different vegetables will help you in different ways. For example, this time of year, there's a lot of squash. People that have trouble eliminating, squash is fabulous to help elimination. All right, so... Um, Use the squash, use the the um, vegetables because they are uh, high fiber. They help elimination. And you've all heard me say this, vegetables heal. If we don't like vegetables, and I promise you, you see somebody that says, I don't like vegetables, I won't eat vegetables. They are unhealthy and they will always be unhealthy because vegetables were put on this earth to help us heal our body, okay? Because high nutrients and healing power is phenomenal. So with the, John mentioned about um, trouble eliminating and your squashes, so all your orange vegetables, um, your red peppers, yellow peppers, um, you know, your bell peppers, um, butternut squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, all those orange colored vegetables have a lot of vitamin C in it and they do help the colon so if you're struggling a little bit you can try incorporating um some of those vegetables into your diets and somebody sent a chat um okay so somebody just asked about uh masa corn because i've heard that the lime solution is prepared and liberates the vitamin b which is not normally absorbable well um i I still contend I will look at that up um, and find out what I can find out, but it's still a corn. Therefore, I would highly recommend um, on a program, no off of a program. You want to have some, um, fine. You can try it, but it's still, there's no nutrition. And the, um, the vitamin B, if you're doing the right things, you're going to get all your nutrients anyway, whether through supplementation or all the other foods that you can eat. And isn't corn causes allergies too, doesn't it? Does. It does. Yep. Okay. Legumes. Uh, legumes are your lentils, your peas, soybeans, all that stuff. Okay. Not from a can. Now, why? A couple of reasons. Number one, canned food is already nutritionally uh, void for the most part, okay? Number two, most of your cans of uh, food, obviously you don't want the material that's in the tin and a lot of them will label it, uh, what's that called? Uh, BPA free. Yeah, BPA free. free, okay? Again, I don't I don't believe it. Um, I, don't, uh, I don't chance it and I tell everybody else. It becomes easy when we open cans. I understand that. It becomes easy when we throw things in microwaves. Mm -hmm. But everything that we do that's easy is less uh, nutritional value to your body. So I stress the thing that we have to go back and do the things that where we get the nutrition in our body rather than trying to find the easy way out. Um, legumes are high in protein excellent source of protein, especially for people that don't want to eat much meat. Uh, legumes, you buy them raw, you soak them, uh, cook them. They're, they taste better. They are better for you. And like I said, they're very high in uh, protein. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to mention? Mm -hmm. And when we do our, our uh, scans, a lot of times I'll do uh, food scans and they'll actually break down for each individual, um, like lentils by color, okay? Um, and some of the legumes, like black bean versus uh, uh, red kidney beans, et cetera. So 
It's all dependent upon nutrients and each one of the legumes and all foods have different nutrients in the in them that helps. And if we're uh, deficient in those, it'll lead us towards the certain foods that will help us get that nutrition. Okay. Okay. Um, grains. Now, most of us grew up eating grains. We like our carbs. Okay. How about you, Maureen? You like those carbs? <laughs> um, I've no Maureen's been around for a long time, so I like to tease her. But um, for people that need to lose weight, want to lose weight again, I'm going to go back to this. Even though we list the flowers, like almond, amaranth, I won't read them all. Um, they're still carbs. And if you're trying to lose weight, the one thing you want to do, even though they're legal, is stay away from a lot of carbs. So again, if we cut it out and we said no carbs whatsoever, people would freak out. Okay. And I understand that. Uh, so the list of uh, flowers that you can use are listed. Uh, brown rice, brown rice pastas obviously are are the best. Uh, chickpeas are excellent. Your lentil pastas are the best way to go for those of you who want to have carbs. Uh, but you don't want to overdo it, no matter what. We have to get back into the mindset that, in essence, your plate should be about half of it should be vegetables. The other half can be the meats your your uh, grains, that type of thing, when you start breaking down. When I was unhealthy, three quarters of my plate was um, three quarters of my plate was carbs. I guarantee it, or maybe more than that. Okay, uh, I but I find that the longer I stay away from it, the less I really want it, and so it's a matter of lifestyle change getting away from what we're used to. And we all know that if you go out to eat and you order um, spaghetti, let's say, the the amount of spaghetti they give you is actually six to 10 times a serving size, believe it or not. Mm. The serving sizes, if you ever look up a serving size, is small. We don't need nearly as much food as we think we do, Okay. So it's just a matter of getting into the mindset that we don't need as much as we our brain says we need. And our brain says we need what we're used to having. Mm -hmm. So another question. Go ahead and read it. Is there a better way to prepare veggies? Is sauteed or steamed better? Okay. You want to answer? Oh, I was, I was going to. Go ahead. All right. So you, you want your veggies to still have some crunch to them. Okay. You don't want to cook out all the nutrients. If you're boiling or steaming your veggies and you drain the water and it's, you know, green because you're cooking zucchini, green squash, and that means all your nutrients are, are gone in that water. So you want steamed or sauteed, either is fine, but still have some crunch to them, okay? Not overcooked. Anything else? Okay. The best way, let me tell you the healthiest way to eat vegetables. I'm going to take you uh. from the top down, okay? Number one, the healthiest way to do it, which very few of us do, and I did some quite a bit recently, is juicing. And juicing means you take all the pulp out of it and you drink what's left. Why is that the healthiest? Because it gets directly into your bloodstream. All the nutrients get in your bloodstream. You have to drink it as soon as you juice it. You can't let it sit around because it, the enzymes uh, leave the juice when it, when it sits around. Okay, So it's not something you sip on. You juice it, you drink it. That's a, the healthiest way. Number two is raw. Okay, raw vegetables, because all the nutrients are there. It's high fiber. Um, you'll feel full. A lot of times you'll feel, if you're not used to vegetables, you'll feel gassy. Okay, uh, it's not a bad thing in this case. It's just what vegetables do, especially to people that aren't used to eating vegetables. A lot of people that don't like vegetables 
or haven't eaten vegetables, they'll eat them and say, makes me gassy and feel bloated. Correct. Your body's trying to adjust. And you have to understand when we haven't been doing the right thing, we suffer. And there, there's a gentleman on, I think he's on, um, that was used to drinking Red Bulls. <laughs> and when I put him on a program, I told him, when yes, you start, you, <laughs> you're going to hurt. You're going to be in pain. So he told me that for the first few days, he was in his basement, had a picture of me on his wall and was throwing darts at him. That's how bad he felt. Okay. But that's what happens. Our body is changing. So a lot of times we we start to change and it hurts. So we, we say, uh-uh, I'm not going to do that. Well, then you're, you're destined to be unhealthy. Okay. We have to change our behavior in order to get the the results that we want. So getting back to vegetables, uh, juicing number one, raw number two, and then number three is uh, sauteed or boiled. Uh, Lightly steamed. Steamed, I'm sorry, not boiled, steamed. Uh, that is the third way. And like Patty mentioned, don't over uh, saute or um, steam. Okay. Steam. So you want, like she said, you want crunch. You lose the crunch. It's of no value to your body. You're telling your body to break it down and get no return. Okay. So great question. Um, if anybody else has any questions, just ask or send a message. Okay. So on the on the carbs, let's just just so I can make sure everybody understands. Uh, you want to get rid of all gluten. Gluten should be Things once in a while when you go out, like Patty is going to go out for or do things for her birthday, whatever it might be. Okay. But it's it's a day or it's a meal. That's it. And then you go back to the healthy way to eat. Even the healthy stuff, I want to reiterate, don't Got overdo it. it. Don't overdo it. Okay. Stay with the vegetables, the lean protein, that type of thing. Okay. I don't see any more questions, so to move on. Okay. Mushrooms. Um, there are a lot of people that think that mushrooms are bad. Okay. Mushrooms are not quote unquote bad. Um, there's, there's, they are a fungi. Okay. Um, you don't necessarily want fungus, but certain fungi are fine. And that's mushrooms. Um, not from a can. Mushrooms uh, can be eaten raw. They can be eaten on any program. They can, uh, you can uh, saute them. You can uh, put them, throw them in your salads raw, like I said, etc. They are very, very good for you. Just don't go out and pick your own because you never know. Okay, <laughs> there are some that are. Okay, um, but I highly recommend if you like mushrooms, um, you know, eat them. If you have never tried them, try them. If you're going to try them and you've never had them, I recommend that you saute them or you put them in something else, okay? A lot of people just don't like the looks of them, uh, which I understand, but they are very, very healthy um, form of, uh, I call them a vegetable, but uh, they're excellent. Anything you want to add to that? No. Well, I will say that a few years ago, yeah. Well, I was never a big fan of mushrooms and a few years ago, we were at a training with um, Dr. Nelson and um, both Dr. Nelson's Linda and her son Wally, and I commented on not liking mushrooms, and he, in a loving way, he told me to grow up and eat them because they were good for me. So <laughs> I'm going to pass that along to anybody out there. If you don't like them, just grow up and eat them because they are healthy. I tell her that all the time. Just grow up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on okay moving on uh nuts and seeds okay very high in protein uh when you buy them you want to buy them raw once they're in packages once they're salted etc they are processed now the best thing you can do if you say you know what i just don't like eating them raw you can buy them raw Take them home. You can soak them. You can uh, put them on a, a cookie sheet, put some oil on it, uh, use sea salt, uh, pink Himalayan salt, 
put them in the oven, roast them, do whatever you want to do with them, and they're fine. But when when the manufacturer um, does it, they have to preserve them. So we just want I just want to make sure. Uh, why no peanuts or pistachios or very few on programs? None. But even when you're trying to stay healthy or you're staying healthy, peanuts and pistachios actually are have a lot of mold. And the reason is because as they mature, the shells open. And when the shells open, they draw uh, moisture. And then that moisture and the heat, everything else, it, it creates a mold, which is obviously not good for us. So it's the same thing as if you went down into a cellar, it was all moldy or a building, and you breathed it and, and whatever it might be, you're ingesting it. So it's not recommended that you eat peanuts or pistachios. Again, once in a while is not going to hurt you if you're not on a program, but don't get in the habit of saying, I just love peanuts and or pistachios. I'm a peanut guy myself. I love peanuts. Pistachios never necessarily tickle my fancy, but um, the raw nuts, the way to eat nuts, the best way is almonds. However, they are very high in fat. It's a good fat, but it's still a fat. So you don't want to get in the habit, even though they're uh, legal, sitting down eating a whole uh, pile of nuts, you know, as snacks, because then weight loss becomes more difficult. It goes back to the things that give you the nutrition that are, uh, and not so much calories am I concerned with, but to a degree. Uh, but the fats and that type of thing, we just want to keep it in perspective, okay? Okay, there's always a question about dairy, et cetera. Butter is fine. Um, you can buy it salted or unsalted. Does it make a bit of difference in reality? Um, your oils are fine. Uh, but you want cold or expeller pressed oils. The darker the bottle that you buy the oil in, the better. So when you see olive oil or, or uh, flaxseed oil or whatever in a light bottle, it's not as healthy as the dark bottle. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, again, uh, avocados, you'll see their avocado oil is fabulous. So is olive oil, um, your sesame seed oil. Those kind of things are really good. I cook with um, normally olive oil or coconut oil, personally. Um, I never use sunflower safflower, not because it's not good. It's just not my, something I just never did. Um, obviously with butter, you don't want to overdo it if you're trying to lose weight. Um, and even the oils, you want to try to keep your oils, uh, as, um, limited, but don't be afraid to use oils. There's all lots of nutrients in the oil. Again, though, if you're going to cook with it and you overheat, you'll see it, it starts to spark and, um, splatter. That means it's too hot. So you want to keep the temperature down as much as you can on your oils for better nutrients and uh, absorbability into the body. Okay, another question. Why is cream cheese a legal food while natural, raw, or aged cheeses are not listed? Okay, it's all in the way they're processed and made. Okay, it's all in, the, in that vein. Again, uh, cream cheese is a legal food. Can't put it on bagels. Um, so people say, why would I get cream cheese if I can't have bagels or bread? And the reason is obvious. Uh, we just, you can't have the bread and the high carb. But cream cheese is legal, but you don't want to overdo it. Your age cheeses, um, it's it's just the way, again, they're processed. Uh they're high, much higher in fat, et cetera. And they don't digest well. And they don't digest, correct. They can clog the colon. Clog the colon. And they can also create, um, um, well, by clogging the colon, uh, lactose issues as well, so especially the cheeses. Okay. Um, 
if you have any other questions on that, please send them. Um, want to answer as best we can. Any comments on oils and yep. and just the butter? You no, know, it's stick butter. Yep. Nothing in a tub. Nothing that's I can't believe it's not butter because it's not butter. Um, but stick butter, like John said, salt or unsalted. But just wanted to clarify that. But and it doesn't have to be Land of Lakes. It can be Stop and Shop or Big Y or wherever you you live and shop. So right. And the other thing is too, you know, I I mentioned earlier about easier. I've had so many people say, well, if I get the tub of whatever it might be, it can sit on the counter. It doesn't rip the bread apart. It doesn't. And that, you know, it comes down to the easier things are, the less healthy they are. And it's just the way it is. Um, when we talk about cooking oils, you know, you do not want to use things like uh, canola oil. Okay. When you read ingredients and you see canola oil, you don't want that product. Canola oil is made from what is called rapeseed. And um, it is not a healthy oil at all. Now, most, a lot of restaurants use it because it's it's inexpensive. Uh, a lot of it's in our foods because it's inexpensive. That just makes the profitability higher when people buy everything. So again, you, there are certain oils you just do not want to be putting in your body on a regular basis whatsoever. Why don't you take that one? All right. Okay. Is there a better oil to take if one has high cholesterol? Yes. Then I would highly recommend coconut oil, um, and I would recommend um, olive oil. Okay, but again, they are higher. Um, olive oil is a little bit higher in fat, so if somebody is really concerned about cholesterol, I would stick more to the uh, coconut oil than I would the olive oils. But again, don't be afraid to use some olive oil. Cholesterol, you know. Now that somebody brought up cholesterol, let me just, cholesterol is known to be high when people are eating a lot of gluten and then, um, and, and some of the things that we talked about not eating, some of your butters that aren't real, all that stuff, because they're chemical. If we're eating healthy, I would not worry about what oil you're using based on, because of cholesterol at all. But to answer that question, if you're concerned, I would stick with uh, coconut oil. All right. Then the next question is, what about MCT oil or organic cacao butter wafers? Okay. So the MCT oil, if it's heat processed, no, you don't want to. It's not healthy. Anything that's heat. We talked about overcooking your vegetables. So any natural product that's heat processed is not good for you. So that's why with the oils, we say cold or expeller pressed oils. Um, I don't know what organic cacao butter wafers are. So you're going to have to text John a picture of that with the ingredients, and we can look into that a little further. Excellent. And I get confused as don't see cold or expeller pressed oil on sunflower or safflower. So if it doesn't say cold or expeller press, then it's heat processed. So you can probably, you know, look more at a um, natural health food store like, oh, uh, River, Val River Valley or like maybe Trader Joe's or Whole Foods um, to find something like that. Or just switch to a cold or expeller pressed olive oil or coconut oil. So... If it doesn't say it on it, they're telling you it isn't. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's really what you have to keep in mind. Okay, if if it is expeller pressed, um, cold, then they put it on because they they know and they have to be honest about that. And that is another reason when you buy oils, you want the dark bottles. Why? Because sunlight actually can affect the quality of the oil. So the lighter the bottle, the less um, nutrition it is, okay, because of light. Light actually takes away from oil, the value of oil. So. Okay. okay. Once off the program, I understand it is good to eat fermented foods because very healthy bacteria. However, are some foods too high in bacteria slash yeast, for example, water or milk? Okay. 
Excellent. Great question. Great question. Okay. Um, yes. When you're not on a candida program, there are foods fermented that's actually very good for you. And Patty mentioned in the beginning that after we do the group detox, we're going to go into the 17 uh, superfoods. And some of those foods are fermented. For example, kefir, um, uh, sauerkraut, uh, kimchi. Those are all really good. Now, if you're on a candida program, they feed candida. That is why they become off the list when you're on candida. So people say, well, if it's really healthy for you, how can it be feeding something bad? That's, that is the way it works. There are certain foods that actually feed the bacteria if you have an overgrowth. So that's why we take those away. And once off the program, then fermented and the 17 superfoods, there are fermented foods in it. And that is why on a candida program, a uh, young lady was in today, we took her off a of candida, put her on a wellness program. She can now have vinegars because the candida is gone from the body, but she still wants to work on her overall health and maybe lose some more weight, et cetera. But she can now have, same with fruit. Fruit feeds candida. We all know fruit is healthy, great for vitamin C, okay? But on candida, that is not the case. It feeds candida, so we take it off. And then once you're on um, off of the candida program and, and living a healthy lifestyle, some fruit is good. Not overdoing it, um, not taking the place of vegetables, but fruit is, is healthy for you. Okay. Uh, go back to, uh, can you uh, look at that question again? Okay. Uh, for example, water or milk kefir. Okay. Yes. You can make your own or you can buy it. Okay. As long as the ingredients are, are, are good. Okay. Uh, yogurts and all that stuff it has. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just, this might be getting a little, little off topic, but um, the kimchi, um, a lot of kimchi has sugar in it. Yes. So kind of defeats the purpose. Um, when you're off program and you're looking for something like that, um, the fermented foods. So you still have to be careful with sugar. Mm -hmm. um, so just remember that. All right. Unsweetened non-dairy and nut milks. Okay. Oat, almond, coconut, hemp, flax, nothing flavored, no vanilla flavored. It needs to say unsweetened on the box or the carton. Okay. Um, there's a lot of variety out there. There's a lot of um, refrigerated, non-refrigerated. I think they're pretty much all the same ingredient-wise, um, but not necessarily price-wise. So um, you just have to find what works for you, what flavors you like, or what nut or seed that, that you like, um, but nothing vanilla um, or chocolate or anything like that. A lot of people like to use these uh, in their instant meals because it makes it thicker. Uh, actually, it has more nutrition than just with water. I just use the water, um, but everybody's different. If you like it thicker or sometimes you're feeding it to people that are very fussy, you can make it more like a, a milkshake type thing when it's thicker and have more flavor. Uh, but one thing I do want to mention is it says unsweetened. Uh, I don't want you to confuse that with the term that we use, uh, never buy something that says sugar-free or anything like that. So don't confuse that. Uh, this is one where unsweetened, it's just the nut milk, okay? It's broke down into a liquid form. Uh, there's nothing added or subtracted, and it's put in cartons. So unsweetened in this case is fine. Uh, when you buy yogurt, we want you full fat. So we say don't do low fat or anything that says sugar free. You never want to go there. But in this case, um, it's that's what you want is unsweetened. Okay. And I kind of segued into this one: uh, unsweetened, full fat, plain yogurt. Now, when I go to buy yogurt, I sometimes have to search for the full fat. It's all low fat, uh, 2% or no fat or whatever it is. You want full fat 4 or 5%. The, Sorry, that's, that's the cottage cheese. Full fat is 4%. Okay. So the yogurt 
it's either 5% or, or, or higher. Yes. 5%. Okay. Um, and I use, um, oh God, or, um, Fage. Fage. I find I can Probably find that more in the, in the full fat than most any of the other ones. Uh, I, I have a hard time. In fact, when we did the superfoods, I bought, um, yogurt and i took oh, a yeah. picture of it and <laughs> one of our clients who's on here tonight. who's on here today called me out and said that yogurt you have is is low fat and i i got it i thought i would re reach for the full fat and apparently i didn't so yeah um okay. thank you to the person that uh called me out on it. and that's perfectly <laughs> fine okay um i make mistakes as patty will attest to mm -hmm. go ahead you were gonna say oh, i was just gonna show Edamame. Yes. Yes. Edamame is fine. Yep. Oh, the question was, can we have edamame? And the answer is yes. Okay. So I like this. I don't, can't tell what's in that picture there. This might be in there. This Cabot, if you guys can see that. Um, this is a 10% yogurt. And this it's really thick and i i like this one the best um stop and shop was out of it for a while i couldn't find it and i got this greek gods one mm, thumbs down for me on this one i don't know if anybody else likes this but i wasn't too uh too thrilled with that one and then with the the fage or faye or this is the one i like um so the five percent is the full fat they also have a, i think a two percent and a zero percent but you want the full fat and this is 5% for the yogurt, okay? Now, again, if there's certain things like we're talking about that you don't like, like mm -hmm. I don't eat yogurt unless I mix it with uh, instant meal or put maple syrup in it or something like that. Um, you don't have to eat yogurt uh, or cottage cheese. And it, it, there's no way I'm eating cottage cheese, as some of you already know, because on our, <laughs> our Facebook page, we we have a running uh, conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Patty puts cottage cheese on everything. OK, I bet if she was to eat a bowl of cereal, she'd have cottage cheese on it. So I just don't understand that. But anyways, uh, you don't have to eat it all. So I don't want you to think I have to eat everything. The things that we have to eat, have to eat is vegetables okay um so ashley let me say that again we have to eat <laughs> vegetables <laughs> and we have to get enough protein protein is huge those are the two things we must get in our body so just just keep that in mind okay um some All other right. questions so feta cheese from sheep usually feta is from cow so that's why we say no feta but if it is from sheep, um, if you can get, if you find it from sheep and you know that it is, yes, that's okay. okay. Yes. Um, what about okay. kite hill plain unsweetened almond milk? Yo, I'd have to see the ingredients on that one. I've not, I've never seen it. Mm -hmm. So if you could again send me a picture of the ingredients, I would be more than happy to answer that question. Barbara, you're throwing some uh, doozies at us. Can, somebody's not muted. Can you mute, please? Okay. Um, um, yes. So th that helps everybody else. Um, you know, if, if there's other things out there that we don't know, and sometimes mm -hmm. clients bring in uh, packaging and all this, it's fabulous because people do find things that are healthy. Um, there's a gentleman sent me something. What was it? Taco shells or something that he found. Um Mm. Uh, no, no. Was, uh, I, 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 I can see him. I just can't think of his name. Anyways, um, but yeah, if you find something, send it. And a lot of times, I'll ask you save the package, bring it in, so other people can see it and uh, use it. Um, should oils be stored, um, sealed and out of sunlight? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Um, you you do want to keep them in uh, room temperature. You want to keep them sealed. Uh, etc. So uh, that's a hundred percent correct, and that was a great question. So that's okay. it. Um, so let me just um, okay. Barbara is throwing some good ones at us. Yeah. So okay. 
Somebody just sent me a text and said, Ashley is a dream. Wonderful. I'm so glad Aww. to hear that. Okay. She just, just needs to eat more veggies. Yeah, she needs more veggies. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to. We love her. <laughs> she is. Uh, Ashley is going to start a program in a couple of weeks. So um, we all want to be supportive of her too. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving along, what what's next? So okay. just flipping around. So we talked. So I forgot to move the mouse. So here's your cottage cottage cheese. Your Philadelphia, um, the block or the this is the only thing. The soft is fine with the cream cheese, and again, the brand doesn't matter. And then this is a goat cheese. I really like this. Um, this plain goat cheese. And remember, you can have goat cheese anytime you want on any program, as long as it's just goat cheese. You can have it. So, okay. So confused a little why soft cheeses seem to be prioritized over hard ones. Okay. Again, the hard ones don't digest well and can clog up the colon. And pretty Processing. much it's just more, it's just harder on the body. So we want things, you know, eating things that will digest better and faster um, on the body. So that's why. Um, no hard cheeses. Okay, so um, somebody just sent me a picture um, on that, but I got it. I the um, I need the other ingredients. This doesn't, unless I'm missing a picture here. Maybe I am. No, try to send me the where it says other ingredients, not the nutrition facts. Okay. Oh, I'm waiting for that. Um, All right. Okay, hummus. Okay, I love hummus. I could sit and eat hummus. Uh, oh, so I have one in the refrigerator. It probably went bad, but other no, that. I was eating it today. Oh, you? Oh, okay. The refrigerator at work here. I brought veggies and didn't have hummus at home, so I eat on some this. <laughs> it used to be all the hummuses were fine. Okay, um, the tribe, uh, all the different ones were fine. Uh, unfortunately, they started putting um, uh, dextrose and sugar into them. Uh, the only one that we can find, without a doubt, is Sabra. Oh, and no, Joseph's and Cedars. And okay, yeah, that's right. If I did look at, I looked grocery shopping recently. I looked at those. Okay, so, uh, but still read ingredients. Now I'm going to go back to Sabra because that's the one I use. They've come out with different flavors. But you have to read the ingredients because those exotic flavors have a lot of sugars and, and uh, processing done to them. So we have to constantly look at ingredients. Uh, when I first did the program, yeah, Tribe and all those, uh, you could just grab one and, and be done with it, okay? Uh, but as time changes, they keep on changing the way they do things to cut cost, uh, try to enhance flavor. Give me a big example is um is a chicken that's um rotisserie chicken. Rotisserie chicken. Again, when I first did a program, I ate rotisserie chickens galore. Mm -hmm. But now they inject them with um dextrose and sugar because it makes them plumper, it, it enhances the flavor and it etc. And so now we we can't do that. So unfortunately. The manufacturers are doing things to make it tastier and a lot of people say more addictive that we just crave it. And that's a sad thing, but we have to be cognizant of that and take care of ourselves. But getting back to the, the hummus, great dip for vegetables. Um, I was telling somebody the other day about a salad dressing and always comes up about salad dressings. What can I have on my salad? Uh, I shop at um, Big Y, and I huge shop mostly in Stop, Stop and shop. shop. But in the, both stores, in the produce section, they have salsa that's in a plastic tub. And again, read ingredients. Don't just assume if it's in a plastic tub and in produce section, it's okay. Uh, but the one I use is um, called La Mexicana. And it comes in mild and um hot i believe it is mm -hmm. um and i take that and um drain some of the water off of it and then i take hummus and i mix them together and i use that as my salad dressing okay and it gives um 
it gives really does give um a flavor a kind of a kick and i've even done it where i'm going to go out to eat and when i i want a salad before dinner i'll get their regular garden salad and i'll take a little container of that with me and just put it on i'm uh, i'm not bashful about it okay so just some thoughts but the stop and shop what's the one they have there it's just stop and shop brand um, it's their own their own their salsa own yeah just read the ingredients yeah. okay i got a picture of that um ingredients almond milk water almonds starch citrus fiber locust bean gum xanthan gum that, that what kind of starch though that's the only problem i wouldn't do it on candida but that would be fine for somebody that's yeah, just where it says the starch, it's kind of it's questionable. Right. Is it corn starch? Is it potato starch? You know, what type of starch is it? Um, so for candida, I would say no, but uh, maintenance, uh, staying well, I see no problem with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So the, again, that was the um, what's it called? Just so everybody knows, it's called Tight Hill Almond Milk Yogurt. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So for those of you who want to make a note of that or whatever, that's uh, something you can look for. Try it. But please, if you're on a Candida program, do not. Okay. We'd rather be safe than sorry. So getting back to this page, so other things on here um, for flavor, you can use the Bragg's Liquid Aminos. Um, that's the original one. It's an organic soy sauce or their coconut liquid aminos. Um, definitely gives food lots of flavor and apple cider vinegar in moderation. So for salad dressings, um, if you I'm like to... um, yeah. um, lemon, you can use lemon juice and olive oil. Um, sorry, lemon juice, olive oil, or an apple cider vinegar. Awesome. Wow. minute. All right. And um, on candida, apple cider vinegar is legal. It's the only vinegar that is legal. On your amino acids, make sure, you know, read ingredients. But if you get the good ones like listed, uh, you, you'll have no problem. And then tofu. So for vegans, we've got a couple of clients here in Southwick on candida programs who are vegan. And they ask if they can have tofu. And I said, sure, just as long as it's clean, there's no alcohol, sugar, or vinegar in it. Um, and it's fine. All right. Okay, another question. Uh, they also put canola oil in many of the... Oh. Well, maybe that was oh no, yeah no, in the in the cheeses in the hummus hummus yes canola oil can be in there and stuff like that yeah you're right not the cheeses they yeah. uh yes hummus Good. and you can make your own hummus too i think i may have done that once in my life but <laughs> <laughs> the chance of me making my own hummus is about as good as me flying out of here <laughs> so all right okay. lemons and limes use them put it Squeeze it in your water. It's alkaline. Okay. It's very, very good for you. Okay? Only fruit that's allowed on a candida program. Yes. Okay. And as much as you want, not a problem whatsoever. So use them. Uh, I'm going to let Patty handle the herbs and spices. Um, I, um, She does more cooking and spicing than I do. So go ahead. So just like it says, all fresh or dried herbs and spices. Um, like everything fresh is best. Um, there's nothing wrong with the dried's, the ones um in the bottles, the McCormick's or the um Bat Badia um brands um are fine as long as you know they they haven't expired. And you want to single herbs, you want to buy single herbs or spices in a jar. I really avoid like the Mrs. Dash. Um, or something that has autolyzed yeast in the ingredients. The ingredient should be just the spice, just the herb. If it says autolyzed yeast, they're putting it in there to help it not clump and stick together. You don't want that. So just cinnamon, paprika, it could be um, a salt, like a garlic salt or um, onion salt. Those are fine in moderation. Um, you're better off with like fresh minced garlic and just cutting up your own onion um, but spices i'm not i don't like really hot spicy things but it's good for your body it's good for your blood it just it gets things moving 
So you, you sweat a little bit, it's okay. Sweating is detoxifying. So um, if you can spice up your food, um, it's it's good. It's better for you. Um, I just had a wake up call. Um, was it yesterday or the day before? I was gonna, I was cooking my salmon, and um, my sister, bless her heart, she had bought a, um, a product. It was a salt kind of a salt seasoning type. Mm. She said, "I really like this. On can you put some on that?" And I looked at the ingredients. It has sugar in it. So read <laughs> ingredients. <laughs> and, and I said to her, "Now I know why you like this." Okay. <laughs> So, but always look at the ingredients before you buy it. You get in the habit of reading ingredients. That's that's really the, the crust of everything is learning to look at it, the ingredients, not just what the product is. Another thing, uh, lemon pepper. I remember, I don't know, a number of years ago, my daughter brought home this lemon pepper seasoning to, to put on chicken and we just, we used it and it, it tasted great. I'm like, wow, this is just so really good. And then, I decided to look at the ingredients a while later and oh, there's sugar in it. So, you know, all those little tricks to get you to love it and buy it again and, you know, just keep using it. So, okay. So here's those cacao butter crackers. So it's just certified organic cacao butter. Okay. Totally new. I'm floored by this shred chop or melt cow butter and use in any recipe that requires oil and where a chocolate aroma is desired. I'll have to get back to you on that. I did not know there's such a thing as cacao oil. Hmm. We'll have to do some research. Okay. And somebody just <laughs> messaged that um, Trader Joe's has a great organic sprouted tofu So for information. So right. Awesome. Um, yeah, if you... Um, Thank you, Judy, for that. And um, we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining uh, us. So um, so Barbara's going to bring us some cacao. Um, There's a question on candy. Now. Did you put the light on? What light? Um, is she on? She's not on here. No, oh, I'm just, oh, oh. that's a good question. So someone te just texted John and said, I have a question regarding the chocolate protein. Why can we have cocoa but not cacao? Well, not cocoa. Yeah. yeah, we can't have either on program, but our in the instant meals, it's it is cacao, natural cacao in the instant meals. So I'm confused. All right. And Liz just sent a message. Uh, thank you, Liz. She said, for those that do like spicy, I'm adding salsas to the recipe books. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Uh, we are going to come out with a uh, new, something new where we're going to have cookbooks available for people for Candida programs to help them. Because um, we want variety. We want people to learn, not just on a program, but all the time. Variety. We eat we want the same nutrients, but we want it in variety. And I think one of the things that happens is if you're anything like me, I cook the same thing all the time. Okay. Like tonight for dinner, I'm going to have salmon and green beans. Okay. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm so, with you. So, Look so, at my posts on Facebook. It's salmon. Once, once I get salmon. that cookbook in my hand, I'll just be able to get some other ideas and stuff. So, Okay. Um, someone asked, Pastor Reed asked, can we have hot sauce? No, if, if it has vinegar in it, you cannot. And most hot sauce has vinegar. If you can find one that doesn't, send a picture to John um, with the ingredients and uh, we'll go from there. And Barbara said, awesome for cookbooks. All yeah. right. All right. So let's get past the, the spices if we're all good with that. But use spices. Spice up your food. Make it tasty. Don't this is not, you have to eat bland uh, to stay healthy. Spice it up. Do the things you like to do. Just know what you're putting in. Okay. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Did it go well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Stevia. Mm -hmm. um, Melise used to do a product called uh, Simply Sweet, and they quit producing, and I liked it a lot better mm -hmm. than Stevia, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Stevia. Like everything else, um, 
when they start doing something that's really healthy and people say, oh, I get an aftertaste, they'll put things in it that um, that shouldn't be in it, like um, inulin, different things like that. Maltodextrin. Maltodextrin. Stevia has a product or that sweet leaf brand of Stevia has a product that they add maltodextrin, which is a chemical sweetener. Yeah. Why so, would you put a chemical sweetener in a natural? Because it breaks down the plant. Yeah. yeah. And so it goes back to the sugar. So if you're going to use Stevia, the only ingredient can be Stevia leaf. That's it. That is that is your Stevia. Stevia can come in a powder. It can also come in a uh, drop, liquid drop which I think for me is a little too strong, but um, but that is for sweeteners if you're looking for something other than sugar. Our maple syrup, okay. Uh, we all, I mean, people start a candida program, they can only have it uh, once they start their liquid days. And then after that, you can have it whenever you want. The first week of candida, you cannot. Um, or any program. Yeah, or any pro, we have it that way in April, just to get rid of the sugar and the mindset about sugar, okay? But please remember that maple syrup, a pure U.S. grade or B, is the only sugar that does not create an insulin reaction, okay? So if somebody is diabetic, they can have it. Uh, somebody has sugar cravings. Sometimes when I just want something sweet, I'll just go and drink some out of the jug. I live alone, so it doesn't matter, okay? <laughs> Just so everybody knows. Uh, except my sister, and she that's too healthy for her. She's not going to do it. So anyways, just kidding, babe. <clears throat> um, so just understand that that is a very good product, and that's the only syrup, as Patty would say, syrup. I was going to um, say, for those of you who are confused what John's talking about, he's talking about maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> I call it syrup. Um, it is um, healthy. Um and it should be the only syrup that you have in your house ever. Use it for when you do French toast or pancakes or whatever you might do. Use that. Don't use the other stuff, please. Okay. All right. So our Melise brand instant meal replacements. Um, the four on the right with the... The mocha, the vanilla, the strawberry, and the chocolate. Those are the originals, and those are whey-based. Um, the whey is clean from cows that live in New Zealand and that roam the countryside. Um, different from domestic cows here in the States, the cows in New Zealand feed off of 21 different grasses. Um, here in the States, uh, cows get about four different grasses to feed off of. So it's really, really clean whey protein. And uh, two are vegan and chocolate and vanilla. And those are pea, pea protein, pumpkin protein um, for those who don't like the whey. And those are available for any program, any day of the program, except your three days of detoxing with the lemon juice and maple syrup. Okay. We already mentioned this. You want fresh? Okay. Um, that was um, <laughs> smart. <laughs> that was our trip to Alaska. Some of the fish we caught fresh is always best. Okay. Not everybody's going to go to Alaska, but always get the fresh uh, wild caught as much as you can. Uh, vegetables. Frozen is fine. Now, I was in Geisler's in Aguam not that long ago. Was looking at frozen vegetables. Uh, it had um, uh, dextrose in them. Okay. So, again, I can't stress enough that we assume. I mean, I was stunned, but I'm used to reading ingredients. Um, I saw that and I just about I thought, why would they do that? But flavor wise, you know, et cetera. So, uh, and cost. So just read ingredients, please. Okay. Do not, well, I don't want you to take that literally. I want you to eat. Okay. <laughs> do not eat what's coming up. Yeah. Okay. So do not eat the following foods uh, during your program. And because when you're on Candida, if you do, you need to start over if you want to eradicate the virus from your body. So real quick, nothing with sugar, okay, which includes all the things listed below. 
Uh, sugar is not just sugar. There's so many things that are added. And if it says anything like uh, juice or it says uh, uh, anything that ends in OSE, uh, syrups or syrups or however you want to call it, anything, malt, maltodextrin, and that's the giveaway is malt. So you uh, erythrol, that's an alcohol. Okay, you don't want those things in your body, whether you're on candida or not, but candida is a must to get rid of them. Okay, um, we don't want gluten. Okay, nothing with the yeast when you're on candida. And again, you want to limit that as well when you're not on the program. Okay, we've had a lot of conversation about the cheeses and stuff. I'm not saying never go and have a piece of cheese you're at a, a party or something and there's peas and crap you know a, if you're not uh, on a program a little bit is okay moderation 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 but not on a program alcohol again same thing on a program no moderation no matter what we're doing when it comes to alcohol fruit no fruit on candida but fruit is good please for those of you who have children, um, you're with people that don't like vegetables. Do not let them replace um, fruit with, for vegetables. It I know it says on the food pyramid that it's fruit slash vegetables, X number of servings per day. It should never be that way. It should be fruit should be halfway down the line, limited, one to two servings a day, and vegetables should be five, six servings a day. So don't misconstrue vegetables heal fruits cleanse keep that in mind Go ahead. okay so all caf coffee and tea including herbal and decaffeinated and no cacao or cocoa powder they are dehydrating to the body and we don't want that we want the body to be hydrated and be healthier and have the cells in your body moving fluidly and freely um and that won't happen if you are drinking um caffeinated um foods and with um you can for tea if you have um a plant what like a peppermint plant or something like that you can use the leaf from your plants and boil the water pour it over it and that's fine when someone is looking for something hot um we also have pure invention water drops that we carry in the offices. Um, but um, for your something hot, a plant-based plant is fine. Or um, ginger is okay to also have for um, something hot to drink. We have a couple of chats here. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on different gums and products such as? Um, those are fine. Uh, that's normally for freshness and stuff. Those are those are fine. Or thickeners. The gar gum and the uh, xanthan. Xanthan. Yeah. Um, I love chocolate so much. Can you recommend some kind of alternative that's maybe similar? No. <laughs> chocolate or instant meals is as close as you're going to get. Okay. So no, chocolate. We we all love chocolate when. When our body's craving and it feeds the problem that we're facing. So I just got to say, no, there is no alternative except uh, like the instant meals, that type of thing. And why can't you have simple herbal tea? What is herbal? Okay. If you're talking about tea leaves, there's mold. They stack them. They create mold. Okay. As Patty said, if you take a leaf or something um, that you... People harvest them themselves. Yeah, grow little plants. Yeah, grow plants, plants and you, plant. they're fresh. Yeah, put them in hot water. That's fine. But not all your tea leaves. They stack them just like tobacco leaves and they mold. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm not going to, um, I know it's seven o'clock. Oh, well, yeah. we're, we're so we're not going to go here. through the whole list the, uh, of the illegal foods. Um, just for sake of time, you know. I'll just flip through it quickly. Yeah. So a lot of it's some talking. stuff we've already talked about. Processed meats, this is huge. Like your deli meats and your um, sausage and hot dogs and things like that. Just keep that in mind, um, how bad they are. 
You know, somebody mentioned hot sauce earlier. So your all your vinegar soaked products, so salad dressings, your pickles, relish, mustard, ketchup, olives, which kills me because I love olives. Um, right up, uh, mixed with cottage cheese, it's the best. <laughs> How we get along? <laughs> so um, nothing artificially sweetened. We've talked a little bit about your sweeteners. So all your pink packets and your blue packets and stuff is they're all carcinogens. Um, causing cancer let me jump in real quick i'm sorry uh, a little bit ago some about decaffeinated if you're ever so inclined to drink coffee do not ever ever drink decaffeinated coffee or teas okay period any question on that i can ask you but no less okay and the corn, corn we talked corn. about the corn so no corn derivatives and no gum or breath mints because if you read the ingredients they're all loaded with chemical sweeteners and if you're healthy you should not Worry about your breath, because if you're healthy internally, your breath will not be bad. Your armpits will not stink, all that stuff. So please mm -hmm. understand it's all about health. It's not so much weight loss as it is health. And all these things that we do is because our body isn't healthy. When we have bad breath and this, all this other stuff. Okay. That's why a lot of people start a program and they'll say, my breath really smells bad. Yeah. Cause we're cleaning you out. All right. Just, uh, what was that? Um, uh, Grow up and suck it up or yeah. suck it <laughs> up. Grow up, okay? it's good for you. Yeah, it's good for um, you. Yeah, I had a client today. She's she said, you know, what can I? I can't chew gum. I said, no. I said, your breath, bad breath, comes from your, from your digestive system. Yep. So once your digestive system is working well, um, your breath will be fine. Good health equals good life. Okay. Um, suck, suck it, it up, up buttercup. Cup. Thanks, like Chrissy. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I'm. I'm, if there's any questions, please shout out. You know we're available anytime. I hope you learn something about the foods and why, the wares, some ideas. Uh, and we're here to answer any questions uh, anytime. Okay. So um, does anybody have any questions right off the top? Okay. I don't see anybody. Um, Matt McCarver. We got a thumbs up from uh, Pastor Earl. Thank you. Okay. We're going to do our drawing. I give away four prizes every class that we do. So, uh, like I said, don't sign off if you want to have a chance to win. We have everybody's name in the little uh, or in our bowl here. Um, Patty wrote them all out. Uh, everybody's name as you signed on. So, we'll mix them up. <laughs> Chrissy, it's still going to absorb into your system. It's gonna hit those, hit your tongue, and suck right into your body. <laughs> what was that? Chrissy wants to know what if I take a sip of coffee for the flavor and spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> we don't drink coffee for flavor. We drink it for energy. And once you get energy back in your body, you you won't miss it. Trust me. All right. Okay. Um, 